And we are rolling and we're back on set and we're live for the Kaizai podcast, episode number nine, with a very, very special guest. <laughs> Very good friend of mine, a brother, Mr. Sam. It's been long overdue this episode. He's finally made his way back to his home island, Bali. Uh, before we get into you and all the rest of the good stuff, you know the podcast drill. Uh, shout out to all our sponsorships. Thank you so much to Kura Kura Beer, one of the best beers in Bali. All their links will be in the description. If you want to use the code Kaizai for 10% off all orders online. We also got Mason Chocolate. You know me, I said it before. I'm not the biggest chocolate fan, but... These get you out. Yeah, <laughs> I had to have some last night before the episode. They were that good. So go and check them out. All the links again in the description. Kaizai on their online website for 10% off all of that stuff. We also have Babi Bagus, which is a traditional Balinese dish of Bali. I'm sure Sam knows what that is. Yep. Uh, you can go check them out in Bumbak in Umalas. They're actually giving us another giveaway. So thank you so much to Babi Bagus. Shout out to them. All their links will be in the description. Go check out their Instagram. So we'll be giving away 10 of these lovely shirts that I'm wearing today. So let me pull one up for you guys right here. We've got them in black, and the back just looks like this with their lovely logo on it. So shout out to Bobby Bagus. Thank you so much for all the help they've done. Um, all the links will be in the description to that, so be sure to check them out. We're on Spotify if you're at the gym on a jog, which he loves to do as well. Listen to the best <laughs> podcast in Indonesia. Um, yeah, Spotify, clips on TikTok. You know what our Instagram is, at kais.i, and you can check out our website as well. We've also got a digital magazine coming soon as well as a physical one. I know I've been out of the game for a while, guys, but your man has been busy, I promise. And I also want quality guests, so I make sure that they're, they're worth your time. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you, Mr. Sam, for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to just quick introduction on who you are, what you do, maybe how we know each other, well, I'll get into that yeah. as well with you. But just for the viewers so they know, yeah. dive right in, man. Dude, I appreciate <laughs> it. That was a good intro. Thank you, man. I try my best. It's been a while. I'm a bit rusty, <laughs> but <laughs> we're dealing with it. No, thanks for having me on. We've been, uh, we've been talking about this for a while. It's been a while, brother. It's been um, a while. The time has finally come. <laughs> yeah, I just got back to Bali last week. Um, prior to that, you know, grew up in Bali, uh -huh. moved here in 2005 with my family. And as you know, you know... <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> We're rusty. It's good. <laughs> as you know, um, like, plastic pollution is a huge problem here. Definitely. Um, and it just washes up on our beaches every single day. Uh -huh. So growing up in Bali, I saw the effects of plastic pollution on a daily basis. Um, and so when I was 12 with Gary, who you had on, um, yeah, a brother, if you guys didn't know, <laughs> it is Mr. Gary Benchkip's brother, Sam Benchkip. Um, you know, we thought, what can we do to raise awareness about all of this plastic? Yeah. And at the time, um, we just had like, I was 12, he was 14 and all we had was two hands. So we decided that we could just clean it up. Um, so every weekend we started cleaning it up and we realized that no matter how many times we clean up the beach, the very next day, the plastic would come back. Mm -hmm. um, so we switched our efforts from beach cleanups to making videos and raising awareness. And uh, we came up with the concept that no idea is crazy enough to create change. Yep. Um, and in 2017, we realized that 80% of plastic in the ocean comes from rivers. And we thought to ourselves, what is the most polluted river in the world? And we Googled most polluted river in the world. and and I'm sure Gary's told you this actually. <laughs> he probably has. Uh, possibly. I want to let you continue. You're doing um, a good job. <laughs> but that river was the Chitaran River, which is here in Indonesia, uh -huh. in Java, uh, so in the neighboring island of Bali. And we thought to ourselves, let's go down this river and come up with a way to raise as much awareness, get as many turns to head or heads to turn. And we realized that, or we came up with the idea of going down that river on the same materials that pollute it, so plastic bottles. Yeah. Um, we did that expedition brought our cameras with us, released videos on social media, and they kind yeah. of blew up Blew up on social media. We'll dive into that shortly. Cool. Yeah, to each um, exhibition you, you have set up. Okay. So, so Bali kid like myself, yep. you were previously in New York before Bali. Yes. You arrived how, last week, was it? Yeah, or last Wednesday. A couple Wednesday. days ago. Last, yeah, Wednesday. last Wednesday, he was back. We went out for some beers. It was, it was solid. It's <laughs> good to see your face. But how was the, the change of, of, of moving from Bali to New York mm. as... You were there for how long? Three to four years? Um, so I went to university in the US. Okay, so you went to um, uni first. Mm -hmm. And was that based in New York? That was in Pennsylvania. Kind of okay, and then you migrated into New York slowly with what you were doing. Exactly. Yeah. So what happened was I was a huge tennis player. Yeah, yeah. That's how we, I think we first yeah. bonded our ways through, through, through obviously knowing mutual friends, right. being born here, but through our tennis coach, Paul. Shout out to Paul. I don't know if he's watching. He's probably playing <laughs> hey, poker. shout out to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we knew each other from tennis. Sam, yeah. a very good tennis player. We still need to play though. I know. <laughs> we'll get a game in after this for sure. Um, but yeah, you, so you went, started playing tennis with Paul. 
and then from there we grew our relationship to mutual friends and then you eventually you did a bit of filming as well no I, you photography and filming is part of your yeah your toolkit so i started with tennis and i really in my head thought you know in bali there's not a lot of tennis as you know yeah. um and we both yeah. wanted to become good tennis players but back then compared to now if they had the facilities we had now i'm pretty sure we both won't be sitting in these seats exactly so <laughs> i actually went to spain and yeah. i think you were planning on going there i was too. as well gonna gonna go to sign i was accepted right. yet, but i was definitely gonna sign up and try get into the to the right. academy which is sanchez casal which you got into which is one of the most prestigious tennis academies in in europe yeah it's a great school and they do what like two hours of three hours of education formal education and you're on the courts all day pretty much yeah i did i did this i'm gonna crack a beer open actually shout out to kura kura but i as we speak about professional tennis we go back which to First, the, the, the I, I hit the island ale. This is my personal favorite. Okay. The, the yellow one's really good. Cool. Um, but yeah, I actually did a camp in, in Bangkok for like a month or so, which was like similar, ASMR. which is like <laughs> yeah, that, that, that pulp in eight. Cheers, Cheers, bro. Cheers, man. Ah, that's a fuel to the podcast. Perfect. But yeah, I had a similar camp in Bangkok, which was like seven to eight hours a day. Oh, really? Yeah. No and way. it was like outdoor courts only and you had one okay. indoor clay court and you'd have to earn the right to play indoors. So it would be oh, like wow. six hours and if you played good, made made your certain boundaries and achievements within that day, then you could hit for the last two hours and do your drills within the indoor court. So they, they had a good structure there. It's Pyramid Tennis Academy. I'm, okay. it's, it's quite a solid one. Yeah, I've heard of it. It's good. It's good. I didn't know you did that. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That was a downgrade. <laughs> but, but it was worth it. That was when I was like young though, before yeah. like I was going to do that and then go into try register. Okay. But yeah, anyways. Um... So, oh, I forgot to actually say this. A new thing, my bad, in the intro I wanted to do is implement a charity within every episode I do. So it's an idea I thought of before coming on today. Um, and today's charity, I'm sorry I didn't say in the beginning, that's really bad of me, but uh, Bali Dog Association, I actually saw them follow me on Instagram on Tai Zai. And it's a similar foundation to ba- Bawa, which is, you know what Bawa is obviously, yeah, where yeah. they save and rescue Bali street dogs. But I saw this Bali Dog Association and I went through their socials and everything and they look like a really really actual good nonprofit organization and what they do is they basically save neglected or beat up street dogs or things sorry not things animals on the street that have been neglected or are in bad shape especially bali dogs and they have a sanctuary with over 200 dogs and what i want to do is, is just put all their socials in the description and also put them all over instagram and if anyone can donate or even just share you know and get 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 their page out there i think that can be something that can make a difference at least i'm going to be donating personally to them um, so all them, will, all that stuff will be in the description on the Bali Dog Association. So shout out to them if you want to help make a change during these tough times, especially the animals. I love animals, especially the Bali dogs. You know, there's only yeah. breed of, of dog in the world, and you know how they are here. Some people don't actually take care of them. So all that will be in the description. So sorry for that little detour. Um, but let's let's dive into the main t- uh, topic here, which is obviously make a change world. The company you and your brother started. Do you want to go into when that was formed sure. and how it started in the beginning? Yeah. So I touched upon it a little bit, but it started as Make a Change Bali at the time, uh-huh. which is a beach cleanup organization okay. that I started with Gary. Uh, and my sister was involved too, so it was the three of us. And like I said, you know, beach cleanup after beach cleanup, the trash would come right back. Yeah. And so Gary actually moved to the US, went to film school, and he worked for Vice for a year. Wow, um, Vice I didn't know that actually. Yeah, he worked for Vice for a year. And that's really where like our passion for documentary started. I, I saw him work at Vice and you know the little brother I was super inspired I wanted yeah. to learn everything that he did so he taught me everything that he knew and together that's when we did the Chitaram expedition uh-huh. um, and that was really the first expedition video um, series that we did with Make a Change World Okay. so we changed Make a Change Bali to Make a Change World <laughs> um, global now because <laughs> I moved to the US uh, I went to Spain to play tennis and then I went to college in America played college tennis what were you studying there? Uh, business management okay. um, solid and, and so when I was there I Every summer, every chance I would get, every holiday, I would work with Gary. Um, so for a period of four years, Gary was working with Make a Change World, my sister, uh, making videos, raising awareness, coming up with projects that could raise as much awareness about plastic pollution. Um, and then in 2017, we went down the river. Uh-huh. Um, and then that's what inspired the next expedition. It was kind of whatever we did, like the Chitaram River got so much attention and a lot of impact came out of that expedition. Definitely. You got jo- the president's attention, no? President Joko, he uh, saw Joko the video. We, yeah. um, he then hired 7,000 military soldiers to clean up that river, which is amazing. Yeah, um, That's what you should be doing now, military soldiers. Instead of standing <laughs> on the side of the road, asking people to put their mask on, go clean the rivers. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we actually got a, well, Gary, Gary actually got 1,000 soldiers the to, mangroves, clean, yeah? that to was, clean the mangroves. That was Gary. amazing. Super amazing. Um, Crazy. So if you didn't know, 
his brother before Sam was here. Obviously, you would be there helping. <laughs> he, uh, the mangroves. It was. I think it was because of the rain that happened. No, Gary went to the mangroves here in Bali with his team. Obviously, Sungai Watch. Um, shout out to the shirt you're wearing. Um, he went and, and saw the the devastating impact that the plastic have had on the mangroves. And if you don't know about the mangroves, the mangroves is, acts kind of as a lungs, no, to to yeah. to the to the island or the ecosystem of Bali. I'm not a scientist, but something on those terms. And right. the amount of trash that was just associated and buried and intertwined with these trees was actually unbelievable. I saw on Instagram and he posted up, what was it? A, a challenge to let's clean up all this, how much kilos of trash it was within like a, yeah. two weeks or a week. It was 22 hectares. 22 of, hectares. Of, so it's a massive amount wow. of land. Um, and kind it of was took bad. The, it was really bad. Right. He like, took on the challenge because 80% of plastic in the ocean come from a thousand rivers. Yep. But more than that come from, you know, the rest of the rivers. So say 90% of all plastic in the ocean come from all rivers. Um, Gary was tracking down one very polluted river and it that led, led to, that. to the mangroves and he was like wow there's so much trash in these mangroves a lot and he just started cleaning after one day and realized that there's a lot more because it's just sediments it's just plastic layers on layers on layers and then two the, meters like sometimes the trees as well and so it's really difficult to, to clean and so we got a thousand military soldiers um, to help us for that cleanup perfect um, see that's who else is going to do that no one not even the own government. <laughs> so shout out to you guys again on that beautiful work. Um, but yeah, another thing is I would like to ask you is with Make a Change World, if you had the opportunity right now as, as what would you call yourself as an NGO? You're not an NGO. You're not a nonprofit. You, what was it you said the other day? You were a social enterprise. Yeah, social enterprise. I like that a lot. <laughs> well, so I, I see, you know, Make a Change World was born out of content creation, uh -huh. videos, raising awareness, coming up with expeditions. It's kind of like a production company, if you will. Um, to make videos that raise awareness about plastic, we go on expeditions, make a change world is organizing that expedition. But now soon I watch has kind of been, you know, Gary's baby child. Yeah. He's, he's raised it. He's raised it. <laughs> the kids finally graduated from school <laughs> over the past 10 months. He's um, doing well. The kid, the, the kids got a, a straight A's in class. <laughs> exactly. Um, but so he's kind of built that into really its own company. Yeah. No, hundred percent. A project, of like a project of make a change yeah. world but now it's really i see it um really dive into two like one umbrella is the make a change company uh the umbrella company yeah and then there's sungai watch which is our cleanup community organization here in bali cleaning rivers um, just being the trash. action pack full on doing getting your hands dirty exactly hopefully yeah. in the long run turning products or turning this plastic into gold or products we uh, have you spoke with abe no recently with the company we started with, yes we're going to be doing um, one of the things that's why I've been away from the podcast is we're a new company I've started Rupa with a couple of very good friends of mine um, which we're going to be doing custom made wooden poker tables ping pong table pool tables you name it kind of gaming gaming furnitures and what we want to implement cool. into that from you guys which you've already yeah. spoke to is getting all the recycled plastic you guys gather and turning it into either poker chips or, valu cool. or valuable items right. like maybe even ping pong bats yeah. etc for, 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 for our merchandise um, but yeah Social enterprise, make a change world. What I was going to say is if you had the opportunity right now to collab or work with any other company in the world out there or okay. an individual, who, who are you working with and That's why? That's interesting. I, what? So it's a tough question. It's a tough question. <laughs> Don't worry. Soon I watch is like our cleanup branch, make a change world yeah. is our media. This is make a change world. Okay, Not so make a I change watch. world over the past year, you know, living in New York, collaborating with a few cool people. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll dive into that later on. I, I can't name like one person but i'd like <laughs> okay, to, kai zai <laughs> kai zai okay cool, perfect great answer no i mean i don't know there's like obviously you know a million people that come to mind in terms of people but i look at a company that i really look up to and that's patagonia okay yeah i love the way that they're structured i love the, the way that they give back to the planet and they're super you know, their entire ethos is yeah. let's protect our planet and so i would say you know if we could come if we could come up with a product i know that's not make a change world but if we could come up with a product with Sungai Watch X pa Patagonia, wow, that'd be that'd be sick. That'd like, be very that'd sick. Be really cool. <laughs> that'll pop off for um, sure. Because I really like their clothing. I got a couple yeah, of shirts. Yeah, they're really they cool. They make top top gear clothing. With Make It Change World, you know, I just started a new show called Run with Sam. Yeah, um, an interview show where I interview people while running, and so I really want to do a series here in Indonesia. And we talked about it the other night. Yeah, but yeah. Run with Sam Indo, and so I don't know, like some really cool Indonesian. Um, that would definitely, influencers, that would definitely celebrities. Come. So like Hamish yeah. is one of them that comes to mind. Yeah, shout out to Hamish. He was actually going to come on. I think he might oh, be cool. next guest, maybe a little teaser. Um, so he's been doing some cool. super busy. Yeah, yeah, cool work with the oceans and like picking up plastics. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. There's a few people that 
that I would love to do a show. No, definitely. With. I think I think you you will you will definitely get into that and, and and do it very well. And the roads here, I feel like, would add a lot more atmosphere, like New York. You know, because yeah. when you're in New York and you're running, that city never sleeps. You know, there's yeah. always something happening. So it's yeah, it's actually hard because there's so much loud. That's what I mean. Yeah, there's I so much like, noise. So much noise. Sorry. You must have went in on the microphone or something, you know. You gotta get that top gear because I was like, yeah, the gear I spoke with Gary. He's like, you get your brother told me he's like, yeah, he spent this much on a microphone. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure you need that to run through the city of New York and get like premium audio while you're moving. Yeah. What do you have? You on like a little e-bike while it they're filming you? It took us a while to figure out because it's essentially simple me. concept but hard to think of. Exactly. Um. So I don't know if you know the show Carpool Karaoke. Yeah. Or Hot Ones. No, definitely. That's exactly right. When when you did that, I was like, this. Will you will get to that statue? Hopefully, hopefully. no, definitely yeah. you will, bro. I'm telling you, with the with the with the clients you got already, and the get sorry not clients guests you have already, right. and the the stature of them, and the views you're pulling in, bro, you're on a way to success. Like yeah. I, I'm telling you now, so it's been fun to make, but it's essentially us two running, and then there's sorry, no, <laughs> correct, no correct. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a friend of mine driving an electric bike, uh -huh. and then another friend of mine holding the bike strapped onto him. <laughs> With like a little rope, like a little like clip on rope. And that's how he like stays attached. Cause he like the, his rig is pretty intense. It's like a st stabilizer with like. Fuck, he must be like in a, in a one position. He can't move. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. And so for an hour, he's just holding this You thing. better be paying him well, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Gabe. Shout out to shout Gabe. Shout out to Gabe, man. Doing, doing the dirty the work. Doing the dirty work. Yeah. But yeah I want to congratulate you on that show. Thank I you. have it as a, as a bullet point here to talk cool. on. Um, it's a really, really smart idea that I truly believe will, will will pop off. It already has, to be fair. And to continue it on here, I think will add really good diversity to yeah. to the channel. Um, with Make a Change, one more thing that I wanted to go into is is do you have any app ideas with the, with this social enterprise? Yeah, absolutely. I think we, you know, we're continuously brainstorming with Gary and Kelly. Um, every day is kind of a learning lesson. You know, you're out in the field. We now have 84 trash barriers in 84 rivers here in Bali. Yeah, and Gary's built this like amazing, like amazing company that I arrived last week. <laughs> You're like fuck. <laughs> I arrived last week, and I've been seeing through Instagram. I've been helping yeah. as much as I could with yeah. other, you know, on more on the administrative side from New York. I got here, and I've seen all the photos. It's unbelievable, man. I I zoom like I was on Zoom with him three times a week, and I got here, and I was like, wow. To physically be there and see. This is a it. real company that he's built. And no, it's, it's truly outstanding. More than a company for sure. Um, and so now I'm so lucky and grateful to be able to be here and help him. But as I'm, as I've been here this week, I've you know you notice things. You're like 84 barriers. Our team is still quite small because we're we just started. Yep. Um, it's really hard to to like create um, an efficient system where 84 barriers are being cleaned up every day. Our main and we're only gonna get bigger. Like we're trying to get to 100 barriers. We're like well, every expanding river. to Java. Yeah. Um, the whole of Indonesia. Um, and so we're getting we're gonna get you know eventually a thousand rivers. And so definitely. An app? Hundred thousand, fuck a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> All the rivers. All the rivers. <laughs> um, but we'd love to, to, yeah, create an app, maybe that more like internal that could help us, you know, identify. I what... definitely think it would be something to to add to the resume or the portfolio where you could like say, you could access the, the app live or get notifications to people who have the app. Let's say this river needs urgent cleaning now. Right, exactly. And you're signed up to it and it would be like, I don't know, a map and then it would... Exactly. Pop up anybody? Okay, I need it. We need to get to this river now. And our and patrol on the team app, would be able to go there exactly. first. Exactly. Who's available? Boom, boom, boom. I um, can go. I'm on the way and yeah. go. And so I've been here for a week, but Gary's definitely been developing an idea there. Um, yeah, so, I'm sure he has, man. Um, definitely. So, yeah, th that would be great. And then something that we've always, you know, our dream with Make a Change World being the media is how can we convert a view into per, a change into maker. a piece of plastic picked up. Uh huh. Um, and so in the long run, we'd love to create. I don't know whether it's a streaming platform or because we're so small, make a change world is like its own thing. So now watch it its own thing. But how can we connect the two and how could we make one view equal one plastic bottle picked up? Yeah. And whether it's like us identifying that or um, creating a, a streaming service that is like a make a change world streaming service that has, you know, a bunch of different series like run with Sam, like, um, what are the what are the most sustainable businesses in Bali with Kai? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you're the host. <laughs> Linking it all together. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. That'd be cool. It will get there, man. Definitely, for sure. Like you say, as long as you're learning every day and you're doing what you guys are, right. it's, success is inevitable. Uh, another idea I actually had with that, I spoke to Gary, is the lack of just simple trash cans and, and, and rubbish bins around Changu or just areas in Bali, which you could just put on, I don't know, some recycled made out of bamboo or made out of whatever is simpler for you guys just put yeah. them every 150 meters 200 meters because there's no trash cans right. here bro have to walk down the street 
Yeah, I know. I'll give you a hundred thousand for every trash can you pick out. <laughs> yeah. You'll see one big one that's overflowed with a bunch of shit, like right. every like you know block. Yeah. It's it's. Well, it's, that's really the problem with Indonesia and the yeah. developing countries. Is there's people, a lack like, of. Sungai watch little trash cans everywhere. So we're actually one thing we're developing is the village model. Uh huh. So right now we have three warehouses. Um, Tumbak Bayu being our main one in Pernan. Yeah, been there. And Great place. If you guys are in Bali, please yeah. stop by. It's always it's, we, it's we welcome for everyone to, to walk in. It's, I was there um, for the opening when they did the cool. okay. the cutting. Yeah. Well, he did it with the with the with the, the scissors. Sour thing. He, oh, really? <laughs> he fucked up a couple of times and eventually he got there. <laughs> that was the that's highlight. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> um, but so we have two different stations: one in Raban and one uh, in Klating. And the idea is to localize trash pickups at a local level. So yeah. how can we? pick up the trash from the village, from rivers, and bring it to one warehouse where in terms of efficiency and optimization of logistics, we don't have to run around Bali because it's a pretty big yeah. island. And it is big. So People think it's small. It's massive. We have 20 rivers in with one sorting station, a little team that collects all that trash, brings it to that warehouse. And what we could potentially do, and we've been talking about it, is installing Sungai Watch bins instead of just focusing on rivers, we're now focusing on household trash. Exactly, yeah. And all of the trash from that village now goes to Sungai Watch Klating or Sungai Watch Braban or like Jakarta or Surabaya or whenever we go outside of Bali. And then we have, and like that's a model that we're trying to scale. Oh, 100%. Um, the problem is like Gary said was you, just the, the, the amount of staff or or, imp, or, or helpers you guys yeah. have at the moment. It, it's, it's, it's not possible to right. get a system to pick up all those trash cans, you know? Because yeah. then if you leave it and you're not efficient with it, then it's just going to be left there and no one else is going to pick it up. And then the question is, what do you do with the trash? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a really tough tough thing that we're trying to figure out and like like i said we're learning every day we're like exploring people are approaching us with ideas and we're just like a we're sponge you know whatever people yeah. say we're trying to listen and trying to see what is going to work best you guys are doing a good job though keep it up i'm sure you yeah. guys being here a week there. but yeah I'm, 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 I'm loving it i'm speaking like it's my it's like but really all credit goes to gary you know 100 like, percent uh boss gary boss gary shout out my guy we'll have a well, cheers to you <laughs> and your sister man i'm, I'm not even kelly. doing your sister your sister yeah, no, Ke- kelly is bad. super involved as yeah, well yeah i'm sorry I, from <laughs> harris she's in bali she landed two days ago it's the first time we're all Welcome together <laughs> The whole the whole family's here now. You get, everyone got to watch out. <laughs> the 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 triple triple trouble has arrived. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the expeditions now. Each yeah. Because you've done a, you've done plenty here. I can you've got plastic bottle sitarum that you want into. You got the bro pro clean PKLN. BK- Brooklyn. So BKLN stands for Brooklyn. Okay, my um, bad. Bro, bro, bro clean, clean Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay, bro, bro clean Brooklyn. <laughs> Kaliling Bali. Kaliling that Bali. I can say better. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got the recycle Mississippi or hashtag recycle Mississippi. Yep. Um. So let's 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 go into each individual um cool. expedition and then you can go in and just yeah. give some points on what it is and what you achieved and maybe the aim, mission, and vision for each one. So if you start off with the, uh, so you did the plastic bottle Sitarum already, yep. right? That's the dirtiest river in Jakarta that you talked about, and yep. you wanted to go in with a. Can I say boat made out of plastic or more yeah, of a kayak, kayak, kayak made, made out, made out of plastic bottles? Yeah, and you did the what's it called videos through that and successfully yeah. got into the government of Indonesia, which I think is the top level of what you can achieve yeah. from a project like that. We never expected that. Yeah, so so well done on that. We can we can move on to the bro clean Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used to seeing PKLM all this shit, yeah. you know, with the military. So I was like PKLM. <laughs> <or is laughs> <this?" I> am. <laughs> exactly, that's what I was trying to read. But yeah, so bro clean Brooklyn, go into that. Tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about what what this what this expedition was about. Yeah, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, we had done uh, the Chitaram in 2017 August, uh-huh. and you know we've both always been into sports. Like I was, like I said, very yeah. into tennis, and I love this idea of combining sports and adventure with a way to tie in plastic pollution and awareness and education. Great idea. Um, and then video being you know the tool that carries the message, uh-huh. um, and so. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, we both were in America at the time. I was in college. Gary was living in New York, working for Vice. And so we just, again, you know, Google yeah. is our friend. <laughs> <laughs> Google is a good friend of ours. <laughs> and we're just like, what is the most polluted river in New York? Yeah. What is the most polluted river in America? And so it was in Brooklyn. One river called Gowanus Canal. Say um, again? Guan- the Gowanus Canal. Gowanus. 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 Uh, and then the Newtown Creek. Newtown Creek, okay. Uh, so those two rivers had a really long history of industrial waste. Okay. So, so just factories pumping their fact- shit. Exactly. Into them. Yeah. Um, and so the. So black water ting on the river. Black water. <laughs> black green. Also just like the, the sediment on the bottom is like m- meters. Is of, anything living in that? No. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, some three eyed fish. Maybe, maybe now, maybe now. <laughs> 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 I heard if you fall in you grow a sixth though. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um 
No, so we wanted to, you know, similar to the Chitam expedition, uh-huh. uh, raise awareness. And so we just stood up, stand up paddled um, to be, you know, somehow as in, in a way dangerous, if you will. Like, the, more, the more crazy the adventure. Yeah, the, the more, more tension it's going to get. Exactly. The media is going to be there. So if you're standing, pad, stand up paddling down this river, then people are thinking. And when you live in New York, the Gowanus Canal is viewed as, you know, this disgusting yeah. canal river that no one ever goes to. Um, it's it's a cool is it just one main river like Shum or is it like kind of branched no, off so like the River Thames? It actually starts um, in Gowanus and it goes into the Hudson, so it's okay. not a real river. It's kind of like a canal. Okay, um, so it's man-made. But the reason it start it starts where the sewage is let out. <laughs> so, so it's purposely made almost for sewage waste. Pretty much, it was built way. in like the eighteen hundreds, okay. and it really they. I mean, there's a bunch of people working towards cleaning it and restoring it. But the purpose of the expedition was essentially, if we can fall into this river, maybe you'll listen. You know, like yeah, fuck, um, hey, come out black. <laughs> so actually, what's amazing, not that our expedition really created any of this movement compared to the Chitaram, but now the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency of the U.S., yeah, is now cleaning it up. Wow, well done. Um, Would you say does it affect the you guys? Definitely. Uh yeah. Why not? Maybe. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't give credit to the expedition because it, it was you know four years later, but. Well, I think just sometimes the work- takes that amount of time for these corporations right. to fucking even think about what you're doing, you know? Right. But I think the work as well of the people along the river that have been trying to restore it, like there's a huge movement. Um, the Gowanus Dredger is this organization that have been trying to clean it. Um, so that was like the smallest expedition we've done because it was just one day. It uh-huh. was a very small canal. We just stand up paddled, yeah. made, a video, made a video, and then we interviewed people doing cool work around cleaning it up. Um, so that was one of, that was the second expedition. And then that led to Kaliling Bali. Yeah, Kaliling Bali. So summer of 2019, yeah. Yeah. Dude, this um, was involved with Malati as well. Yes. Yeah, so shout out to Malati. She was on another the show. Another legend. UK. Great friend of mine. Went to school with her. Cool. She's. I'm going to give her actually another shout out for what she's doing right now. No, She's mm. she's in Europe doing some yeah. amazing work. So she's. Uh, she went to the festival. At yeah, the wow. Cannes Festival. Yeah. Hats off to you, Malati. You're, you're, you're an inspiration to everyone. Uh, but this one, Kaliling Bali, was... Uh, with bamboo, no, or something to do with uh, you were getting some some traditional fishing fisherman boats yep. and going. So you, I'll let you explain. I'm sure yep. you'll do it much better than I am. <laughs> uh, the idea was, let's go back to Bali. We want to go back to Indonesia after the Chitarum. and what can we do to figure out how much plastic is really in the ocean? Okay. And the purpose of that expedition was, let's bring a scientist on board, and let's travel around Bali. Indonesian scientists or Western scientists? Indonesian scientists. Okay. Um and. Her name is Tanya. She started her own organization called Divers Clean Action um, in Jakarta. She's doing amazing work around microplastic testing and wow, what cool. happens to plastic when it enters the ocean. And we built a boat. We wanted to do a fully sustainable, man-powered sail. Wow! From the one point all the way around Kaliling, Bali. Um, That's a <laughs> right, that, so Kaliling seven, means means like go around, around or like to yeah. go around something. Exactly. So to to go around the whole of Bali. So if anything goes down with this end of world bullshit, you're going to make me a boat, yeah, and we're good. <laughs> so actually, dude, I don't know if you want me to make you a boat. Because the first boat we built... You still have the boat? Is it saved somewhere the, just in the case? Second one, you need the second a... one. <laughs> but the first one, actually, because we want it to be fully man-powered. So uh-huh. no motor, um, a sail, essentially, and wind power. Yeah. Uh, solar panels with a little engine in case we need yeah, it to in use case, an engine. Just in case. With solar power, so electric. Um, and that was like a catamaran, a catam- catamaran, Catamaran. Catamaran. <laughs> Catamaran. <laughs> and we, I built that, this boat for two months. Uh, only two months? Two months. That's solid. Using repurposed wood. Okay. Um, yeah, but still, you got, what did you say? Hydroelectric power, solar power, uh, man. Elect- uh, solar powered, um, and then wind power. And wind power, and then man power as well. And only two months. That's solid. Um, but the thing is, the first time we tested it in water. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it started sinking. Yeah. Well, two months, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's just a short I mean, period of time. I've never don't... built a boat. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> you, were, you were just behind the camera. <laughs> I, was, I, you know, I was building the boat every day with like a local yeah, yeah. team of two guys. I know you are. I'm just I'm, I'm... Um, <laughs> no, I know. But it was a definitely, you know, completely underestimated the yeah. swell. But that's the best the thing, though. Bali. You know, yeah, you learn so happens. much with these expeditions. Yeah, exactly. You you think it's going to be like this and you go for it, especially 100%. with projects like this where you're literally going into nature into yeah. like the swell around Bali is no joke. Like it's no joke. If you guys so know many, like yeah. <laughs> it's even in the most sur- surfable beaches here which are full of tourists and everyone yeah. knows the swell's no joke. And then yeah. not even like going around where people don't even know what's happening. Yeah. yeah. No. 
So you you failed the well you didn't fail the boat the sea fucked up your boat because it's it's hard to do. Yeah. How many times did you did you go back and forth before you got the final model that worked? So we, um, well that's the thing everyone told us you're not going to be able to do this expedition. Yeah, and that's one thing that drives you no no but exactly so yeah. What I want to say is every single expedition we've done, everyone said, you're not going to be able to do this. This is too difficult. It's too dangerous, and that's what honestly drives me to do it. Um, hey, I can't agree with you more. Like when I'm doing anything in life, if it's yeah. sports, even if it's business, even if it's just goal setting or whatever yeah. it is, if someone's telling me, yo, you can't do this or like, yeah. I, I don't know about that, works. man. I'm like, you know what, bro? I'm just going to do it two times yeah. better just because you said that. Exactly. <laughs> it's it, it's the main fuel in I think a lot of entrepreneurial people's lives is when people yeah. tell them they can't do anything or yeah. they don't believe they can achieve anything. Yeah, no, that was well said. That's exactly what it is. It's funny how we are. So like, keep it coming, people. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I can't do stuff. <laughs> but yeah, so that was a cool expedition. We brought this girl Tenya and then Milati came on board. Um, and then we had a skipper. So we had, uh, so the second boat, you know, that was successful, that floated, that um, worked. And then the purpose of the expedition was, let's calculate how much microplastics is in Bali's water. With the scientist. With the yeah. scientist. Um, bring it back to the lab that we're working with in, in Jakarta. And also, let's figure out what's going on around Bali, like in the remote places, like in Bali National Park, in yeah. like Ahmed. In G-Land um, as well. In no. G-Land, like what's happening with people, like are people actually as involved as they are down south? Yeah. Is everything concentrated down south when it comes to cleanups? And so we met some amazing local initiatives that really, really we've never heard of. Yeah. That, you know, aren't really on social media, but are doing amazing work. Um, and so that was a really cool expedition. It was a seven day expedition. And, um, and again, you know, always including videos as part of our as part of the trip. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. Just that's the whole thing. It's a marketing right. side of it where you need to promote that so people actually get aware or get attention of what you're doing is through yeah. this whole social media movement. Yeah, yeah. And then so the next one is the recycled Mississippi, right? So that was actually the first expedition. Okay. Um, but I didn't have it in a specific order. But my bad. Yeah, but that was actually Gary going down on a boat made of eight thousand plastic bottles. Wow. With and six. And where'd you get these eight thousand plastic bottles from? Um. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, ladies I wasn't and gentlemen involved. we got him <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was I mean it was definitely repurposed I wasn't uh -huh. part of the expedition no definitely I, it's like you you probably went out and got them yourself or, right yeah. um, and it was Gary and six friends um, 56 days from the start of the Mississippi all the way to the Gulf of Mexico wow um, and you know obviously when you're doing something like this you're on a boat it's a small catamaran. Ca catamaran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small catamaran. Yeah. Um, no showers, no nothing. But that was Gary's expedition. Yeah. Um, and that was the first one back in 2016. And um, you know, similar was let's raise awareness around this river. That's one of the biggest rivers in America, around the it's issue of plastic city. pollution. Yeah. Where is that located in America? It's kind of right in the middle. Um, and so when I ran, which is the last expedition. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. When you cross the Mississippi River, you've officially entered the west side of the United States. Okay. Um, it's a the, massive country. The Wild West. The Wild West. <laughs> the Wild West. Kind of is like that, actually. <laughs> the Wild Wild West. Okay, so let's 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 go into a little bit of, of Run With Sam before okay. before we head into the obvious, which is quite crazy. You're going to stay tuned for that. <laughs> so Run With Sam, When where did this idea stem from? Right. Initially, so, because you're based in New York. It's, it's really New York. New. Where, where where did this idea pop in your head? Were you were you writing some shit down and it came to you, or were you brainstorming, yeah. or did it come from a friend? Where did it, where did it stem from? Yeah, I I'm trying to think of the origin, art, origin. Yeah. But after my well, the run, you know, the big run across yeah. the U.S. That I've I've actually never been a been a runner. Uh huh. But after that, you know, I ran for six months every single day. It was part of your life. <laughs> six marathons a week. So it was almost it almost felt weird not running. Yeah. Um, it, definitely it was very strange that when you feeling. pick up a skill like that and you're doing right. it every day and you're committed to it exactly. it's like when you don't do it it's like whoa right and so I've always wanted to create or start an interview show you know yeah. similar to this interviewing cool people hearing about their story exactly and, that's the whole point of it man just, yeah. just with, with the net like your network is your net worth you know and yeah, with the no, people totally you agree. know and where we're from and just the advantage we have that I'm so grateful for like that's one of like our unfair advantages everyone has unfair advantages and your network's part of one of your unfair advantages right. and just being able to, to, to reach out and share individual stories like yourself your brother all the guests I've had right. on the podcast is 
just to put it out there, you know, to just show the world, like, look at these people who are either have made a great career for themselves, who are changing the world day by day, who are just yeah. an overall great character. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I definitely, I get where you're coming from. And in New York, you know, it's kind of like, it's, it's Bali. Yeah. yeah. Like, you have so many people that come to New York that start a company, that create amazing the things. The Big Apple, baby. The Big Apple. <laughs> and there's, um, there's, 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 there's cultures from everywhere you know exactly. there's cubans there's there's africans yeah, it's there's so italians it's like a com- yeah exactly um and so the idea was how can i create an interview show that's unique yeah and how can i interview someone about their story but do it in, do it in an interesting manner that's never been done before so i was just you know brainstorming and you know making videos is definitely a big part of what we do now do you edit all your videos yourself yeah film wow. and edit well unless done. i'm hosting yeah um but usually i'm behind the camera so actually roman sam was kind of the first time I ever hosted a show. Yeah. Um, but you're a good host, bro. Thank you. You too. You're a good host, man. (laughs) We try. (laughs) We try. (laughs) But, um, yeah, it was kind of like that. You know, just how can I come come up with a show that's never been done before? That's unique. That's funny. That will get people's attention. Well, you, you got to crack on, bro. I remember when Gary told me I went home, I watched, I, I I watched all of them, bro. Shit won't go. (laughs) The links will be in the description to, to, to the make a change YouTube channel, by the way, it'll be at the top. Go, go watch all that stuff. It's, it's, it's a great watch. It's really, really lovely. Um, so, with the run with Sam, who has been your favorite guest so far? That's a hard answer. <laughs> a hard, hard question to answer. I feel, like I, I feel like I know the answer. You're just trying to be polite. <laughs> well, I mean, episode one was with Dude With Sign, uh-huh. who is, uh, you know, this Instagram celebrity now. Yeah, the guy just holds the sign up. <laughs> holds the sign up. It's so smart. It's with so, really it's funny quotes. simple, genius things, But bro. he's one of the funniest, like, people I've ever yeah. met. Is he American? Yeah, he's American, yeah. from Texas. Okay. Um, and he Hook got <laughs> he got hired by Fuck Jerry, this uh-huh. yeah, yeah. huge meme account. Um, that his friend started it, and he pretty much came on board as a comedian, as a comedy writer, so to write jokes for Fuck Jerry. And then one day, you know, you get company emails, and apparently, um, someone was like, "Happy birthday, Jessica," and <laughs> everyone kept replying all. Like, yeah. happy birthday happy birthday and so you kept getting email you kept getting boom, emails boom, 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 boom. and so he just wrote a sign saying stop replying all to company emails yeah went out in the street <laughs> just <laughs> someone post took a photo and that apparently blew up that's like there's something with somebody holding a sign in public yeah i don't know what it is but it it, it just pops off like right. you can, you it's can a unique it it's yeah. a unique visual exactly it's, um, that's exactly what it is it's a yeah. unique visual but so he visual. was really cool he was really funny um he was the first guest then i've interviewed ryan sterhant who's like this really cool yeah um Real estate agent. Who, he's a legend. I actually watch his stuff. He's he's very very smart, and someone yes. to look up to. Yeah, definitely. exactly. He's, so he's congratulations been one of, on getting together with. Yeah, that. he's one of the big mentors in New York. Um, super successful real estate agent. Just the way that he thinks yeah. is is very inspiring and it is very hard worker. You know, he's great at communicating. Um, and a nice guy as well. Very like, nice, very relatable. Read his energy from the from um, the from the run. I was like, he he he's inspiring. Number one and number two, he seems like a very humble person. And if yeah. you put those two together, you're gonna achieve a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um, my bad. Sorry, it's already on silent. No worries. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was without. He was my favorite guest for sure on, really? on Run with Sam. Just because he's inspiring. I look yeah. up to people like that, you know. And yeah, kind of getting a little bit into not real estate, but like selling some 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 land and stuff. And to look at someone right. like him who's done like. Just levels on levels in a place like New York City, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. What's really interesting with his story is he came to New York trying to be an actor. Wow. And he, you know, couldn't really make it. Yeah. And then got his real estate license, and now he's the biggest real estate agent in America. That's what I mean. Like, like if if you're going into acting, you're obviously someone who's who's comfortable right. talking. Charismatic. To people. Exactly. exactly. And being around in groups. So right. that's all real estate really is. Is is yeah. number one connections. Yeah. Yeah, you're who's right. Who's trying to call me right now? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> It is business, but we're in business right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could have one one right now, one dream guest, you, you make the phone call to any anyone you want to, to have on Run With Sam, who, who are you having on? Who would that be? Uh, you know, being in Indonesia, I think... It could be anywhere. You could right, be, you could no, be I know. Any, um, but you could be running up Machu Picchu. I don't know. <laughs> Just who do you want there with you? Dream guest. Dream guest. Uh, Dead or alive. Okay. I'm just making the question even harder for you. <laughs> <laughs> now it just makes it infinite, infinite potential. But I would love to interview Jokowi mm-hmm. because now we're, I'm in Indonesia. My focus is now on cleaning rivers with Gary. How can we clean as many rivers together in Indonesia? Um, and you know, he was obviously involved in the Chitarm expedition. So he'd be a great guest in terms of any guest ever. Um, 
I there's this photographer that I follow okay. called Jimmy Chin. Uh-huh. He's the director of Free Solo. I don't know if you've seen no, that film. It won the Oscars in 2019. Free Solo. Free Solo. Solo here in Indonesia. No, Free no. Solo is um is just the name of the film. Okay. That won the Oscars as a documentary. Okay. Um, and I just what's it what's it about? It's about uh, Alex Arnold, who who uh, Free Soloed, which is climbing without rope. Okay. El Capitan, which is the biggest wall. Wow. Um, no like, rope. No rope. So like that, I've done that boulder, like bouldering kind of. Right. Like exactly. A fucking legitimate mountain. Yeah. With no safety. No safety. Wow. Um, so where's Jimmy, this base? El Capi, where's the El rock Capitan? Where's the base? It's in California. Okay. Uh, but Jimmy Chin is just like a really cool filmmaker. Loves expeditions and bringing it back to the expeditions. Yeah. He's like expedition king. Um, okay. And also content and like filming the expeditions. So I'd love to meet him. Love to like interview him. Um, and yeah, he'd be a great guest. I mean, I'm just, you know, I had a list when I started making the show. I was like, who are the dream guests? Yeah, good, man. Um, That's what you have to do. What, yeah. what I have is the podcast right. on my wall. I just have dream guests, yeah. top five, boom, boom, boom. And it's going to happen one day. We know that. It's yeah, going to exactly. take time, but same with you. Yeah. We'll get, um, remember this conversation. <laughs> they'll, they'll definitely happen. I have, a, I have two coming out, one next week and one the week after that. Um, this guy, Daniel, uh-huh. makes he's a fashion designer and makes clothing out of um, clothing that would have otherwise gone to landfill um, so that's a really interesting wow. uh, interview like about sustainability like sustainable fashion that's crazy um, he's a big fashion designer in New York and then the last like the last one of the sh- of the series of season one is this guy called Hella Good uh-huh. um, who also ran across America <laughs> damn and so the entire you're episode, your competitor there <laughs> the entire episode is like how was your run? Yeah. <laughs> so you were in that part where it was like, yeah, yeah. Except he did it twice as fast. Okay, I was just going to say, who <laughs> ran faster? <laughs> he's, he's been running every single day for four years. Wow. Hasn't taken a day off. So he's a, a, like an actual beast, one of the yeah. best runners out there. Well, if you do anything for four years every single day, you're definitely um, going to be up there. Yeah. Um, so wow. that's going to be a cool episode coming out August 18th. Okay, stay tuned August 18th. <laughs> Links in the description. Make a change. Run with Sam. Be sure to like comment and subscribe and all that good stuff <laughs> so now the main topic of conversation this man right here if you haven't guessed it already i've known ran <laughs> from la to new york not new york to la right la to new york new york to la see i knew i would fuck it up <laughs> <laughs> ran from new york to la yes you heard me ran from new york to la so if you want to just go into that again sure. and 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 tell the viewers because that is for me i i remember when you first did it i was like okay like i know you were always going to do it and commit but I didn't know, like, can he fucking make it? <laughs> yeah. Not because you're not capable of making it, because it's it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. Like, Definitely it's not. what, 3,055 miles I have written down yeah, here? Yeah, like, 5,000 kilometers. Mike, I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let you steal the show here, because that is <laughs> one accomplishment that I think will will stand out there for generations in your family yeah. or something to do with that is, is insane. So hats off to you, bro. No, I appreciate that. Get um, into some detail on that for the viewers. Yeah, I mean, you know, again... How, what's the craziest idea we could come up with? Yeah, that, that slogan. Up plastic. Um, the slogan for make a change. And I don't know why I came up with this idea, to be honest. Like, Cheers to that. I'm out cracking up the second one. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you heard it right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, New I mean, York to LA. <laughs> I mean, I Running, guess, not driving, not flying, running. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I went to school in Pennsylvania, a landlocked state. So, you know, cheers, cheers then. Um, the United States is made up of like many states yep. and Pennsylvania is a landlocked state, okay. state meaning it's not close to the ocean yep. when I went to college there all my friends were using plastic yep. and they've even though you know, I was doing the work that I did they didn't really know the impact of plastic and in America it's very out of sight out of mind like you throw oh, it away yeah. you have waste management so someone picks it up the next day and it's gone yep. and you have no idea what happens to it yep. so I really wanted to bring the ocean to middle America. And I thought about doing that <laughs> while running, made on shoes, made from 11 recycled plastic bottles. Wow, so um, was it the Adidas X Parley Ultra, no? Adidas X Parley Ultra yeah. Boost, so I partnered up with them. Wow, you um, partnered up with Adidas as well, like, hats yeah. off, man. They're doing really cool work. So uh, what was the, sh- the shoes were made inside of how many plastic bottles? So it's 11, technically it's 11 upcycled plastic bottles okay. that would have otherwise gone to the ocean. But one into your shoes. But went How many shoes. did you go through of those though? I'm sure so those went, shoes did not last you 3,055 miles. So usually you're supposed to change running shoes every 400 to 500 miles. Okay. And I think I, I used, <laughs> I believe that I used eight. 
Eight pairs. Eight pairs. Okay. Um, it was three thousand miles. You got any of those pairs still left over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have my last pair. They're on the right. wall. <laughs> yeah, actually, in my apartment in New York, you know, yeah. it's the last shoe that I jumped into the ocean with. Yeah. Uh, and then I wrote Rome with Sam on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the purpose of that trip was really let's do as much running as I can to make people. And I'm not a runner. Like I've never yeah. run a marathon in my life. Yeah. I think the most we did was like cross country for BSSA. That's yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> we probably raced against each other. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wasn't a runner, but I was a really fit guy. Like I love sports. Yeah. I was I was playing Division One college tennis in America, which is a pretty good level of tennis. No, definitely, hundred um, percent. And so Any I had level a, of high tennis is right. A good cardiovascular base. Yeah. And I loved you know to challenge myself. So I when I put this idea in my head, I couldn't not do it i know you no idea is crazy enough to achieve bro and i thought about it like i, I remember this day so specifically i was tanning on my surfboard in my parents house here yeah. in bali yeah this was the last time i was in bali three years ago and i was just thinking to myself like i graduate in six months like what am i gonna do and i want to do something insane gary was like you know making videos for make a change we're all a lot, doing a lot of client videos and i really wanted to do something that that would like hopefully blow up make a change world no um, you definitely did bro <laughs> and I, I thought of the idea it was january 9th um, 2019. What time? <laughs> right before lunch. Because I was standing on my surfboard. This moment, I don't. It, it just like stuck to me. No, yeah. I, I thought of the idea, and I couldn't get it out of my head for the yeah. next five months. So everything I did for the next five months, I'm the my same. My last bro. semester of college, and everything I did was revolved around making this expedition possible. Yeah. And there's so many logistical things. Ah, uh, it's not. You think that, okay? You think this is an idea, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna run from New York to LA, but. What goes behind it, I'm sure, is a whole nother universe of of, right. of of things that can go wrong, things that will go right, permits, like what you're gonna like the crew you had behind you, right. sponsorships, like you, you can't do this alone. There's no, no way. No, it's, like yeah, you, you can die. Like yeah. you no, know, you definitely could. You can die. Like um, it's no joke. So there's no governing body over running across America, but it's been done three hundred times before. Okay. So three hundred people have ran. From that's not that many. I always that's, the Atlantic that's to three hundred. Three thousand more people have climbed Mount Everest. Wow, um, fuck. So it's a pretty big. What's challenge. harder, you think? It depends. Like different ball climbing game. is very technical. Different ball game. Mount Everest, yeah, different ball game. Yeah. Different, different thing. But I mean, running across America is no easy feat for sure. No. You could do it over three years, and that and they could be easy. But the real reason why I did it was now when I speak to girls. I'm good. <laughs> so what do you do? I ran. I'm no, joking. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> so if you want to go into maybe the crew you had behind you, sure. let's say. Yeah, I am. Um, How many certain individuals? So you had your sponsorships. You had Adidas. Who else was, was sponsoring So Partly and Adidas were like yeah. the... What the is, yeah, Parley Adidas and Partly. And okay. Adidas. And then you got your own Make a Change was sponsoring you. Make a Change was obviously the, you know, the, the production house. Uh -huh. And then... Um, do you have any like vitamin companies or like 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 I, I started I mean? having one um, but like pre-workout or like honestly, some so shit like that that's the thing that I definitely and that's not being a runner yeah the mistake I made was underestimating the health aspects of running, of running every across day. America I'm sure your feet were <sighs> I lost 16 kilos wow. and I'm not a big guy you know yeah. like, there is a before and after picture yeah, online if yeah. you can pull it up of Sam's face before and after. I'm, it's on your Instagram, no? Yeah, yeah there's like get, a, every it, every 50 miles. I'll yeah, take a photo. if you can do that on the screen, that would be amazing to show. So you yeah. lost 16 kilos. 16 kilos or 30 pounds. Wow. And I, I you know, I looked like two different people. I looked like yeah, I aged I 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in the sun all day. So yeah. like, like super tanned, long hair, um, but... A little goatee. <laughs> I can't grow facial hair. <laughs> yeah. If you manage to do that, if you're gonna grow any sort of facial hair, run across America, you'll you'll definitely grow yeah. somewhat of For, facial Forrest hair. Forrest Gump is definitely a big inspiration. Mm. Um, but I mean, Kelly, my sister, was a huge, humongous help. Um, in terms shout of shout out to Kelly. Shout out to Kelly. Um, she, you know, helped me so much with logistically planning the trip. Yeah. So what the first yeah, that's a guy's mindset. Yeah, let's just go and run. And then the girl's side is like, hold on a minute. Like, there's this, 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 and this, and this. But she, you know, the first thing was, all right, is it even feasible? Yeah. And I had no idea if anyone had done it before. So I went into it completely blind. And I saw that someone had done it. And I saw the last article was dated from, like, 2016. I was like, okay, so like, let me reach out to if that person. If you can person. do it, I can do it. Um, so I reached out to this guy called Robbie Ballinger. How hard was that? Um, uh, I mean, Easy. through Instagram these days, it's yeah. not that hard. Mm, like, true. 
You can re- reach out to people. You can reach out to anybody. anybody. Like so many of the guests that I, a few of the guests on Run with Sam, I just reached out to them on Instagram. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I reached out to him. Still a good friend of mine, like a huge mentor of mine. And in terms like for this run, and I asked him, I was like, hey, hey Robbie, like I've never run before, like, but I've been training. Yeah. Like, I started running a little bit every day and I just want to get my, my legs used to the pounding. Yeah, that's it. It's the stride. What boom, does it feel boom, to run like boom, boom. every day? I've never yeah. done that before. Um, and he's like, you know what? Like you can like just put your mind to it and you can accomplish anything. How, how, what ratio would you say is it physical to mental? So it's, that's always, that's a question that a lot of people have asked me and I always answer differently because I, <laughs> one day it's, you think, fuck my legs hurt. But the other day you're like, that's, it's I mean, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Like you wake up and you're absolutely exhausted. You can't even walk. Like yeah, I'm you sure. You can't even walk. Yeah. You're like, you've just run 30 miles and 20 days before that. And you, you also ran. went to schools and stuff, right? In each state and like, and like spread awareness part. as well. Right. That was the hard part. Did you say? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was the hard part. <laughs> because when you're speaking to the school, yeah. you want to be as encouraging, yeah, as inspiring you, yeah, as possible. Yeah. So you need energy. Yeah. When you just ran 30 miles or 50 kilometers, all you want to do is sleep. Yeah. Knowing you have to do it again tomorrow. So yeah, like I would run a marathon, go speak to a school and maybe meet with like a local mayor. Yeah, wow. So it was like full on days for six months. I took no days off. It was just oh my like, God. go, go, go. It was six days of running, but the day off was where I would do most of my outreach work. Yeah, and go out. And then and it's also sh- like the coordination, like yeah. emailing them, cold calling, hey, I'm running through your town. Yeah, and they're first like, what? And then I'm running like, across yeah. America. Okay. Yeah, like what? What do you mean? Yeah. Like <laughs> you're driving across America? Yeah. I'm so like, no. no. I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so so you in a, were you in a, like a, a, a van or some, some yeah. sort? So I had my sister was helping from overseas. She was in France the logistic, with the logistics, with the reaching out to schools. Um, and then I had one RV driver. So I had a, like a caravan RV yeah. that would follow me. That's where I'd sleep. That's where I'd eat. Um, it was like a small RV that was really like my home for the six yeah, months. The like hub. A, like a mo- <laughs> it was the hub, the motorhome. Um, and I had a friend who was driving, but who was also filming. Okay. Um, so I'm working on a documentary about the run now. Oh, good. Um, I was going to go into that. I was like, you have to put something out behind the scenes of this. Yeah. Um, so that's coming out early 2022. Wow. Cool. Um, that's going to be a movie. Yeah. For sure. So we're excited. It's our first feature length. So it's going to be a 90 minute documentary um, about plastic pollution, the run, and a little bit about Make a Change World, yeah. our past expeditions. Amazing. But... Yeah, so March, it started with this guy, Josh, who's a filmmaker. Actually, Joshua Madre went to uh-huh. BIS, randomly reconnected through Instagram. He wow. was like, you're running across America. You're looking for a filmmaker. I'll do it. I'll do it. And I'm like, dude, yes. yes. Like, Bali, <laughs> I don't Bali, want, Bali, yeah, Bali. you don't want anyone else there, man. Yeah, you know, amazing. That's just giving you extra motivation. Um, so then like, we switched on and off between three other filmmakers. The last person was Martin's French guy who has a good Martin. friend of mine. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> um, great guy. He was with me for three months. And it was really just us. It was two of us. And then occasionally we had a third filmmaker come on board. Uh-huh. Um, so it was the three of us occasionally for like nice scenery shots. Um, but really it was just me and the person driving and, wow. and that person was filming as well. Crazy. It's a very small crew. You had celebrities join you, no, on the run as well. Um, uh, a few, I mean, not, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Mike Posner. Mike Posner. Um, so what happened was Mike Posner, who's a singer. Yeah. Um, I took a plane to Visa, if you don't know that song. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so he walked across America. Okay. So you're like, fuck you. <laughs> no. So what was funny is like, I came up with this idea January 9th, 2019. Yeah. Like two months later, he starts walking across America. And I'm yeah. like, no way. Yeah. Like someone else is doing it right now. Um, and so when he was walking through Pennsylvania, the university that I went to was in Pennsylvania. Yeah. He ended up walking through my town. So I went up, to, I, I went up to like hopefully meet up with him. Yeah. And like I ran into him and I was like, Mike. Uh, I'm, I'm running. <laughs> running across, I'm running across America in three months, yeah. and I'm going the other way. Uh, he's like, "Bro, we have to meet up." So like, yeah. we like, cool guy, really cool super guy, cool guy yeah. super down to earth. Um, and you know, doing something like this is honestly, I mean, it's very admirable for someone that already has the fame, already has. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's Mike Posner. Like, yeah, he was you know Vici's best friend. He Great was like, writing songs. Been through some shit as well. That's why I guess he was doing it. And that's why he yeah. walked across America. Yeah. His dad died. Yeah. His best friend Avicii died. But his music is, is insane. Like he's actually a, a very very. And so talented he released an individual. album while he was walking across yeah. America, which is really cool. Um, so he never actually ran with me, but yeah. I met him before. Okay, sweet. Um, but then I had like friends. I had random people run with me, which is yeah really cool. yeah yeah. Um, but no, dude, I 
un- <laughs> unbelievable expedition. I look back, and as soon as I finished, you're like, wow. I ran through, like, I ran into the Pacific Ocean, 200 people behind me. All I of my friends oh. flew in from around the world to come see me finish. Wow. My sponsors came out. It was like the most magical way to end a trip like this. That must um, be the best feeling, just falling into the cold water. <laughs> just yeah, like, yeah. Ah. I've been chasing the ocean every day oh for six God. months. That was the one thing on my mind. Yeah, just the, the sea, Pacific the ocean. sea, the sea, the sea. Um, I remember messaging you, bro, like once every yeah. every like couple like weeks or so, yeah. just to make sure you were doing good. Right, you got it, brother. Keep going. I'm so proud of you, bro. But yeah, man, you killed it, man. Hats off to you. I would love to continue on this topic of conversation, but we're we're going over time, so we're cool. gonna have to speed things up a little bit. Um, but how I'm gonna move into something. Um, to do with goals and goal setting because okay. a lot of what you spoke about today is, is stemmed off goal setting and I don't think a lot of young people or people out there at the moment reach, actually realize how important goal setting is mm-hmm. and I've only recently started doing it let's say in the past two years of my life and the, the amount of impact and positive impact I've had through it has changed my life significantly mm-hmm. just recently I wrote a goal on my wall which was an amount of money I wanted in my bank account and okay. I, I, I wrote it maybe a year and a half ago um, and I recently achieved it and hey. just to go back to it, you know, and see it yeah. and just be like, Feels wow, so yeah. you know what I mean? And like, I have a book of, I have a journal, not, not really a journal, but like, a, let's say like a goal, goal book or like just idea book. And at the back, there's like a pouch with all the things I've written down and, and, and to have that sticky note yeah. with the date on it and to achieve that number yeah. that's written down is just like, wow. And to store it in there, and I'm gonna just stack up all those. So I just want to go into like sure. what you, because like like running across this and doing make a change and doing all these expeditions, it all stems from a goal. Right. Initially, it starts and with that spark. That exactly. Idea in on tanning on your cert. On your cert exactly, board. bro. Like it yeah. just comes to you. you. Like like when you said, where did it come from? You said, I can't really. Yeah. Tell you. It's I mean, the same with speaking me. Speaking to people. Like, yeah. It honestly, just comes to answer to that question is just speaking to people. Yeah. Speak to as many people, people as, possible. as possible. Speak to and, as many people as possible. And be Travel a to as yeah. many countries as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Help as many communities and people as possible because at the Definitely. end of the day, trust me, what goes around comes around and it will benefit you and benefit right. others. That's the whole point of, of, of living in my opinion. Yeah. Listening to different opinions. Exactly. Um, so so smart goals. Um how often do you do you set yourself personal goals or business goals let's right. say per week or per month yeah in your personal life for the for the viewers who yeah it's funny i caught myself this past year in new york writing on i it's like i love goal setting yeah like, it's that's the best me. bro <laughs> I, you go to my room i have like two whiteboards same, and just same. fucking post-it notes everywhere <laughs> every couple of weeks what yeah. i do is i buy like an a3 piece of paper yeah and I'll get a Sharpie. You see, man, this is it. And I literally just write, like, yeah. where do I want to be in six months? Where do I want to exactly. be in a year? Where do I want to be in five years and 10 years? And I keep that, like you, yep. as, like, somewhere where I'll see it every, every day. day. Yeah. So I wake up and I'm like, all right, where do I want to be in six months? Yeah, that's achievable. Yep. Where do I want to see myself in 10 years? And I'm like, that sounds you, like I'll you, never be able to do exactly. that. Exactly. You put a but goal that's so unbelievably unachievable where it, it makes you know? others look realistic. Yeah, exactly. And then you just keep upping yourself. And then you just got to like put yourself in that mindset where if you like you can really achieve anything. It's really a mindset. Game. Definitely. And I think that goal setting is one thing. And I think a lot of people get stuck in and like they can have these big goals, these big visions. But the issue is once you write that down, you also have to think about. What are you going to do to achieve those goals? And what is that process like? Yeah. And what, you know, yeah, what, what does that process look like? And it's going to be different for everybody and for every goal. But I think that's mainly a, a big issue that I've noticed when I speak to my friends. And like, it's I want to do the first this. step, you know, baby yeah. steps. Like, the first Obviously step. you got to come up with the idea. Exactly. But so write yeah, it I'm, down. I love goal setting. I do it every couple of times that I do it at least once, once every six months. Uh-huh. Like, a full list of goals for everything you know for every month i have i do i do short term midterm long term every month every month oh wow that's great. yeah and then i have a book every month so write down maybe let's say two pages for right. short term per month then the midterm i'll do maybe a page and mm-hmm. then long term i'll do maybe half a page each month and then yeah. take them off that's some great. you don't do some you don't make that's life you learn you grow yeah. some you make you feel great and you you achieve more yeah do you remember the first goal you set and you achieved Yes, actually. <laughs> um, it's running related. Uh, I said I wasn't a runner. Um, this is going to completely <laughs> make it seem like I wasn't a runner. But, I mean, I guess I've always had, you know, I've always loved to prove myself wrong or to prove mm-hmm. others wrong like we talked about. So one day I was at dinner. I was 12 years old here in Bali with my parents and my family. 
and I, I went to Bali International School. Yep. Um, 18 kilometers away or 20 kilometers away. And at the time I was 12 and we we're having dinner and I'm like, mom, dad, like Gary Kelly, I want to run, I want to run to school tomorrow. Yeah. They're like, no, you're not. Like, you're like, yes, I just because you said that. 20 yes, kilometers away. Like you're 12. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like when we were 12, we could do anything. And though. I didn't really say anything, you know, I was just yeah. like, okay, whatever. And then the next day I just took my backpack yeah, I just went with it. my books, bro. Like and I just extra woke, weight. I woke up at four thirty, and I just like ran to BIS. Wow. From Changu, and I was just that's like, that's crazy. And I remember how long did that take you? It took me three hours the first time. Fuck. And were the, you like at some point halfway through like fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. So many times, like, why did I do this? Like dogs are just, like just <laughs> dogs are barking at me. Like, like tr- honestly, no one at four thirty in the morning in Bali streets at the oh, time. Yeah, this was like 100%. I don't know back in yeah two thousand. No Gojet was about that time. <laughs> yeah. No phones. And I remember getting close to school. And all of my friends would drive by, yeah. pull down the window and be like, you want to ride? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> do you, you want to ride, bro? And I'm like, no, I'm running, to, I'm running to school. And so every Thursday, I started running to school. Wow. And I remember my parents, my mom like freaked out. She went to, because my mom's like yeah. a very nice mom. Like she'd no, 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 100%. Come, yeah. come to my room. You're 12 I'm years old. 12. Yeah, yeah. She'd like wake me up yeah. and she'd like make me breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She probably went to my Shout room. Shout out to all like, the moms out there. <laughs> Shout out to all the moms. <laughs> she probably went to my room and was like, where's son? Where's Sam? Where's my son? <laughs> And Gary and Kelly freaked out as well, and, and I was just like cramped. I was cramping the entire day after that. Dude, you got to like period three, probably like yeah. nah. But so I did that for a while, and then was that, what was really cool is a bunch of my friends like, damn, like I want to run to school too. Yeah, you got a club going. So we started getting a club going, <laughs> running to school every Thursday. Um, That's when I, the principal came. <laughs> Sam, what are you starting here? Yeah, I put running off for a long time, and then <coughs> this run happened. But yeah, definitely, yeah. That was the first goal I think I set that I remember that was very, you know, black and white. Yeah. I, I, I thought about it. I achieved it. Great. Then you have like life goals, you know, like yeah. how do you want to live? Who do you want to be? Exactly. Um, A main thing as well is who you surround yourself with, I have to say. Yeah. 100%. Is, is, is very, because humans as, as species are very, we, we like to impress people. We like to be with the people we're around and achieve what they're achieving. So if you are surrounding yourself with people who are doing things and are successful, mm. You better yeah. believe you're Surround gonna be you're gonna best, you're gonna be doing that as well. Yeah. You the can be the people. smartest person in the world and the most successful person in the world that haven't achieved anything yet. And if you're surrounding yourself with people who are doing nothing and who are negative and who are down, it's gonna really affect your your growth and what you yeah. what you achieve. So 100. percent I know, couldn't agree know with that your more. circle. Yeah. Couldn't agree with that more. We could talk for for ages here, brother. Uh, George is gonna charge me over time, so no. <laughs> so we're gonna wrap up the episode. Cool. It's been an amazing episode. I just want to congratulate you personally on everything you've done, bro. Because Thank you, bro. it's 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 amazing, man. No one else is doing things that you and your brother and your family are doing. So congratulations! Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on. It Thank was an episode long overdue. Um, but before we end the podcast, what I like to do is just a quick fire question round. All right. So one place to visit before you die. One place, so goal setting, bro. <laughs> I really want to climb Mount Everest. Okay, that I, is like, I got Machu Picchu, bro. Oh, really? I really want to go I've to Machu Picchu. I've never been there as well, but Mount Everest, like, mm. yeah. When I, was, I see you doing it, bro. I'm waiting for his for his daily updates. Just Mount, my my poser just climbed Mount Everest. There you go. It's a sign. If he can do it, you can do it. He walked. You ran. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one thing you do before you die: climb Mount Everest. Um, because you kind of did doing and visit. But like one no, thing, one, one thing, thing you I, do before you die. One thing I do before yeah. I die. You skydived before? Yeah. 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 yeah that's, of that's course. Usually, standard. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, that's usually the like the question no, yeah, that everyone yeah. says or the answer. I don't know. Go to Antarctica. Okay. Like, good answer. Like I would love to. I think Abby's dad wants to go. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. It's dope. It's dope. <laughs> one thing you do daily. One thing I do daily. Um. To do list. I always have a to do list every Bold. morning. Yep. Yeah. Great answer. One thing you do weekly. Just like brainstorm what I'm gonna do that week. I mean, kind of like a to do list, yep. I guess. That's a bad answer. But more goal setting. One thing I do weekly. I always try to go on the long run every week now. Nice. Um, you know, every Saturday or Sunday, once a week, I just go on like a long run. Don't record it. Yep. Just be out in nature next Nobody's time you go for a jog bro we're not going for dude, some long there. shit at the moment i'll be there with you soon but let's yeah. let's go for I'm a run i'm trying to run on the beach every morning all right let's do it but i need to buy some shoes though and then i'm with you okay. i don't want to be developing blisters fuck off there's too much trash if you know if it yeah mm. beach barefoot but if, i'm talking about like if you go for a proper oh, yeah, jog yeah, yeah. like let's say around changu right i need to, i need to cop some shoes but yeah hit me up next time you go on a run I'll, I'll be there what size of shoe, what feet are you uh 10 10 and a half okay 
I was going to say I have so many shoes for my What run. are you? I have so many shoes for my run. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are you? I have small feet. I, I have, I'm a 42 and a half. That's like me, 42, 43. Oh, 10 UK? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking US. Yeah, yeah man. We don't think you can. US, you yeah. can have one pair of. Uh, right, there we party. go, man. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking about gifts, bro. We actually. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We left it to the end of the podcast. If you're still here, come back. He's bought my uh, Sungai watch shirt. Sungai watch shirt. Thank you so much, man. Here's a lighter and a keychain. I'm gonna Thank throw you. it over for you, brother. Hey. Ready? Boom. And here you go. I need a keychain. Boom. There you go. I don't know what you're gonna use a lighter for, but maybe <laughs> you can sell it for a lot of money in the future. Hey. Sungai <laughs> watch shirt. Hey. Thank you so much, man. I'll be wearing this next episode. Amazing. So I watch shout out um, and the last question one thing you always wanted to learn well pff, this is gonna be really bad <laughs> <laughs> but I grew up in Bali uh, and I'm not a big surfer okay like I've that's one of my biggest regrets yeah. growing up here I know what you mean and I, I, le- I quit at an early age too yeah I left when I was 15 to play tennis and I was very into tennis I was playing three hours a day and I was like finish school at three tennis for three hours yeah. and then you're tired I was the same bro and I was like all my friends would surf yeah and I, I'm like I surf once in a while, but I'm not a big surfer, yeah. and I really want to get into surfing. surfing. I would surf before school at like for the age of say like maybe seven to to twelve. Right. I would surf, but then I completely. Yeah, we have the best waves in quit. the world. Best waves in the world. I would surf. I remember I would wake up at like five, and this is the only time I would wake up and go yeah. surf, and then go to school. But then, yeah. like you said, it was football and tennis, man. Yeah. There's would like, finish school. It's so sad that you grew up in Bali and you're yeah. not a good surfer. Everyone in America is like, you must be sick. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, like, yeah, man. <laughs> I can stand up <laughs> <laughs> oh well on that note man it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much thank Sam. you so much bro. Suksuma. Suksuma. Uh, another shout out to all our sponsorships Kura Kura Beer make sure you check out their link in the description Kaizai 10% off Mason Chocolates Babi Bagus be sure to get into the giveaway we're having 10 amazing shirts to give away that will be launched on our Instagram Kais.i everything will go through there so once this episode is aired live be sure to check it out on Instagram and I just wanted to say shout out to Genesis Studios. Uh, if you are a creator or an artist and you need a creative space to work in, it's located in Brawa and Changu. Great facilities, great people, great staff, great equipment. Shout out to Genesis. Again, all the links in the description. Thank you so much, guys. I'm sorry I've been away, but we're back slowly but surely. <laughs> all the best. Don't forget to do all those good stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe. Kaizai Podcast, episode 10 coming soon. Mr. Sam, thank you so much. Thank you for having me Peace. on. Peace. See you later, guys. Cheers.